gentlemen, welcome. Today we'll be honoring the past, the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor is an opportunity to honor the sacrifice and dedication of our greatest generation, both civilian and military, that endured incredible sacrifices on December 7th, 1941, a date that will live in infamy. The President of the United States of America proclaims today as National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. He encourages all Americans to observe the solemn day of remembrance and to honor our military. Federal, state, and community organization and groups shall fly the flag of the United States at half-mast in honor of those American patriots who died as a result of their service at Pearl Harbor. Before we begin today's ceremony, I would like to also make reference to the Defense Authorization Act of 2008 and 9, which was signed by President Bush and amended Section 301, which says, all veterans and military personnel not in uniform are hereby authorized to render a hand salute during the raising, lowering, passing, the national colors or playing of any anthem or taps. So feel free to Salute as necessary. Today's remembrance, I will welcome, my, welcome recon, and recognize honored guests. We'll have a small summary of the day, what occurred that day. Presentation of the wreath, a rifle volley by the combined honor guard of the American Legion Post 120 and the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 6053. Bugle call, taps will be played. So again, today, thank you all for coming. I know it's not the greatest of days, the weather wise, but we're all gathered here lest we forget. And I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the following individual. Massachusetts Department of Veterans Services General Counsel to Secretary Francisco Urena, Mr. Stuart Ivemey. State Senator Patrick O'Connor the Town of Hingham Board of Selectmen Chairman Paul Healy, Town Administrator Ted Alexiades, and the Assistant Town Administrator Tom Mayo, Fire Chief Bob Olson, Glenn, Town of Hingham Veterans Council, the Massachusetts Veterans Service Officer Association President Seth By, and a former Marine himself. Thank you for coming, Seth. Members of the Hingham High School Veterans Appreciation Club are flanking our sides left and right as they, the young people of America, showing their support for those of the greatest generation. We are honored today to have Carpenter Mate First Class United States Navy Guy Stating who will accompany, accompany me for the wreath. At this time, I'd like to invite the General Counsel of Secretary Urena to come forward to make a brief remark. Thank you, Senior Chief. Again, my name is Stuart Ivamy. I am the General Counsel for the Department of Veterans Services in Boston, Massachusetts. I thank you all for coming, and I thank the Senior Chief in the Town of Hingham for inviting the Department of Veterans Services and Secretary Francisco Urena to attend this important occasion. Today we commemorate one of the most historically significant events that occurred in our country since its inception. On that day, the Americans of Pearl Harbor embraced and defended against two air attacks by the Naval Air Forces of the Empire of Japan, which caused over 3,500 casualties, sinking of eight ships, all of which except two returned to the line of duty by war's end, and gave the American servicemen the opportunity to demonstrate courage and steadfastness unlike has ever been demonstrated in this country before. We have to recall that this attack occurred early in the morning on a Sunday in an attempt by the then Imperial Government of Japan to dominate the Pacific Ocean. 
That morning, acts of courage and heroism, un until then unseen, were demonstrated and have been historically documented. As part of the greatest generation, these people are veterans of our country, and we thank them very much. All of us owe a debt of gratitude towards these men and women who displayed great courage, not only to them, but our veterans of subsequent conflicts. Most importantly, our current veterans, those from Vietnam, who I say to you, welcome home and thank you for your service. Francesco Urena administers, through the Department of Veteran Services, the opportunity to help all of you veterans in times of need by providing services to over um, 300,000 individuals in this state. We celebrate today one of the most memorable and proud moments that this country has ever had. We thank you all for coming because remembering events like this are extraordinarily important. As the senior chief suggested, we must always remember this. And I'm proud as I stand here on behalf of Secretary Urena to see these members of the Hingham High School who joined us today. Often we refer to the World War II generation as the greatest generation and we discuss, could, this ever, could we ever do this again? We see young gentlemen like this, and clearly the answer is yes. Thank you again for coming out, and God bless America. Thank you, sir. So I'll now read the summary of the day. Pearl Harbor Naval Base, Hawaii, was attacked by the Japanese torpedo and bomber planes on December 7th, 1941, at 7.55 a.m. Hawaii time. The sneak attack attack and sparked outrage in America's media, populace, and government, and around the world. On December 8th, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt addressed American Congress and the nation to detail the attack, and he began, and I quote, Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the Naval and Air Forces of the Emperor of Japan, end quote. In that address, the President asked Congress to pass a declaration of war. Congress obliged, voted, and passed. The, the war on Japan was handled the next day, and America's formal entry into World War II. The attack took place on a sunny Sunday morning with a minimal contingent of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Most offices on the base were closed and many servicemen were on leave for that weekend. New technology, including radar mounted on Ona Point, were in place, manned and functioning at the time of the attack. The incoming Japanese attack planes were detected by radar and reported, but were mistaken for an incoming group of American fighter planes due to arrive from the mainland that morning. The primary targets were the aircraft carriers and battleships that were among the 92 naval vessels at anchor in the harbor. With data gathered and reported by the Japanese spies on Oahu and Maui, the Japanese Admiralty knew the location and quality and quantity of the vessels in the harbor. While on practice maneuvers outside the harbor that morning, an American destroyer spotted the Japanese submarine attempting to sneak into the harbor. The submarine was fired upon and immediately reported, but ignored. 360 Japanese attack planes launched, and at dawn, the aircraft carriers and the attack force of about 33 ships under the command of Vice Admiral Nagumo, the strike force steamed under the cover of darkness over 275 nautical miles. Once the bombers sighted the island, they sp split into small groups and proceeded overland at low altitudes and flew over the water and the island to make an approach southwest at 0755 a.m. The first bombs and torpedoes were dropped. After two hours, the U.S. sustained 18 ships sunk or severely damaged. 170 aircraft destroyed, and there are over 3,500 casualties. Japanese casualties, on the other hand, were minimal. Today, the battle-scarred, submerged remains of the battleship USS Arizona rest on the silt of Pearl Harbor, just as they settled on that day, September, December 7, 1941. The ship was one of many casualties from that deadly attack. More than a million people visit that memorial of the USS Arizona each year. They file quietly through the building and toss flowers, wreaths, and lays into the water. They watch the iridescent slick of oil 
that still leaks a drop at a time from ruptured bunkers after more than 70 years at the bottom of the sea. They read the names of the dead carved on the marble memorial stone. For the United States, Pearl Harbor marked the beginning of a war. For Japan, it was the beginning of the end. And for those heroes of 75 years ago today, we shall always remain grateful. God bless you, God bless our World War II veterans, and God bless America. At this time, I will be escorted by Copper's Mate First Class, Guy Stating, United States Navy. We will present the wreath here at the memorial for the amphibious veterans of Massachusetts, a U.S. Navy memorial. While the honor guard fires the rifle volley and the bugler will play taps. And salute! Detail. Order. Halt. This concludes our ceremony. Again, thank you all for coming. Lest we forget. Guy, you did better tonight. Thank you.